let's talk to Sven calling from Washington. Sven wants to talk about uh, the intrinsic nature of things and do the host. So do Neil and I believe that there's a difference in brain cap capabilities. Hi, Sven. In, in, Can you, in uh, what? Yeah, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get uh, you. Uh, uh, yeah. Maybe maybe word Explain. that first. So yeah. <laughs> certainly, certainly. So oftentimes, uh, I've caught a few times in different shows speak about the soul, and I often find uh, mm. the key difference missing in this conversation is that spiritualists and therefore also theists tend to accept or to perceive reality as having intrinsic natures, and it's. Uh, you know, physics doesn't touch on that. So a lot of materialists, especially non-Platonist materialists, uh, don't even consider that there might be intrinsic nature to things. And so I just wonder, do you think that's something that just some people grasp and perceive things one way and another type is able to perceive it a different way? Or do you think it just takes education? Do you see what I'm Quick question. Um, mm -hmm. When you say people like... The, are you speaking to people that have sort of like a magical thinking? Oh, no, just, well, like I said, I've called about the soul a lot. I'm a firm believer that there's a soul. Uh, I'm not a theist. Oh. I don't believe anyone can have knowledge uh, on uh, the metaphysics, but I do well... believe in um, <laughs> Do you really? I, I, you know, I'm interested oh, yeah. in knowing what convinced you of that. Yeah. Uh, while well, I, I did grow up in uh, Christianity, I went to Methodist Church. Uh, I left at like 20 when I was kicked out of a, a music ministry for being too queer. Um, but, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the afterlife and the soul. Oh, no, it's okay. I, thank you. I, I appreciate that is what I should say. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I guess a good way to put it would be like when I talked on Truth Wanted with Oz and Dan, uh, Oz wanted to bring up how to measure the soul, and I said it's like explaining, it's like asking to explain gravity or what gravity and its intrinsic nature is, and what our tools well, do is measure the extrinsic extrinsic property of things. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say um, I, I I happen to know a little bit about measuring stuff because I am a scientist myself. Well, chemistry actually. Um, Love it. Uh, the laws of physics that uh, are underlying of everyday life are pretty much understood, uh, are completely understood. Yeah. And, um, and everything happens yeah. within the realms of possibility, right? So uh, when you're talking about a soul, I would have to sort of know what you mean by a soul. Like, what would a soul be made out of? Because if it is made out of, I understand you mean, you know, we can't really dabble in metaphysics, but it's called metaphysics for a reason, because we have physics. And anything outside of what we know of in physics, we we threw the label of metaphysics on. So, um, for there to be an afterlife, that would mean that consciousness would need to be something um, that is entirely separate from your physical body, which we know it's not. So, I kind of want to know what you believe a soul is made out of. I would push back on saying we know it's not, because there's no way to confirm that consciousness exists outside a body um so that's, that's why we know it's there not. it doesn't prove that it's not there well if it was out if it could leave your body it would have to be some form of matter or energy which basically are the same thing too by the way matter and energy are the same but anyways it would have to be some form of that and if it were it would be measurable and we have yet to do so so that's kind of like I, like if you have this idea that maybe no one really thought of you might be able to like spark something and go and now scientists go holy shit let's look for that you know that kind of thing so what would you say a soul would be made out of or consist of anyways i have no extraordinary claims to present to you unfortunately uh if <laughs> i could go into panpsychism and plenty of things that your chat would just say is word salad um but the <laughs> philosophy of mind is out there. You and don't well say known. that. But... <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I get that a lot. I, I know. I'm that's just why I, that's kind of why I wanted to focus more on, on less on what yeah, philosophy so, of mind is and more on we, you think there's a difference in personality of the kind okay, of people who so can accept if we go back to kind of not if we, nature. Okay. 
if we go back to like the, the kind of like what your your call was about like the you yeah, sorry, the, descript the descriptor of like intrinsic nature could you do you want to go into what you mean by that <laughs> maybe we could kind of go down that line a little bit with oh, an intrinsic yeah, nature of something is uh separate from its extrinsic natures of what it does uh, then the intrinsic nature is what it is. It's kind of why I was bringing up the gravity thing, because we yeah. can only use tools to measure extrinsic properties of things. We can never sure. know why there's what gravity is or why it's there versus not there. We can't measure the it's... intrinsic properties of things by science, by physics. Okay, do you think it's more important to know what gravity is or do you think it's more important to know the effects of it the stuff about gravity because we have now measured gravity waves so do you think it's more important to know about that so that we can deal with the knowledge of gravity like you know putting on jet boots and of defying gravity or or do you think it's more important to know exactly what gravity is because we do have a very good idea of what gravity is and what it's about you know mass attracting mass and stuff like that so uh, when you say it, the intrinsic, uh, love that. Question. You know what? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that question. Yes, when dealing with physics, things, time, matter, space, energy, knowing the extrinsic properties of things brings great utility. Um, it is most definitely yeah. more utilitarian. You you can utilize better the the, uh, the extrinsic properties of it. But if you were to ask me. Is it more important to know the extrinsic properties of a soul or the intrinsic properties of a soul? I would be much more interested in the philosophy of mind and the intrinsic nature of consciousness than the extrinsic, okay. than the extrinsic natures that we can measure through uh, psychology. And so, so you essentially, you do sense? believe there is, you do believe that there is a difference then between like the extrins and like the things that we describe about the brain and about our experience. Um, and then there is something different than that, uh, that you would call like the in intrinsic nature of like your consciousness or your soul. Is that right? Yes. What I am yeah. is much more, the understanding what humans are, uh, is much more important to me than understanding what humans do. Okay. okay. Um, I, well, to answer your question, because you did ask, like, do we believe there's a difference in brain capabilities? So I, I, I'm not sold on this idea that there is a, like something separate that the brain, like when you know, what you're describing maybe as consciousness um, or like the intrinsic nature of our, our minds, I think that is still something that the brain is doing. Um, I don't, so I guess my answer would be no, I haven't been convinced of anything um, that would let me say that I believe that there's something separate going on. But I, I right, I and still, I think I, yeah. that kind of comes from a, a pace of, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead, go ahead. There's a delay. <laughs> Certainly, so that's kind of like where my question wanted to go down, what you think, if you think there's a, a separation in, in personhood uh, between a person that can believe that and can't, because like it blows my okay. mind that you can think there's nothing more to the life. And it blows your mind that I think there is more to life than physics. Okay, like, so uh, you're, Neil, it's more of a... Uh, earlier had said, that's why we call it metaphysics. And I'm like, yes, that is why we call it metaphysics. And it's so freaking exciting. But to the materialist non-Platonist, they're going to say, no, it's just metaphysics. It's just word salad. So your questions oh, are more about, like, do you think like, there's, you a, think difference there's in... a difference between you and myself? Because we can take these completely different positions on something. Like like what you mentioned Congrats. earlier, like it, it is, I don't, I don't think Do that think like, there's have, something like, so obviously different. Be able to separate that? No, 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 not at all. I missed that one. I missed what is, you said. Is it a disability? No, not like, to be you think no. it's a disability for someone's brain to not be able to perceive that? No, I, not at all. I, oh, I not at all. It's so I think, beautiful. The no, I think that I think that there's like, this is a, a an unanswerable question in a lot of way of like what makes somebody's like their brain state set up to be like to become convinced by something or to have that um, experience where, you know, you have that. Um, I, I can't think of the word like that sense of awe and wonder about like that there has to be something I think that like there is different kind of personality and personality we know is like affected by so many different things. Um, I don't think that there is anything essentially different about our brains. I think that it just comes down to a little bit a different, um, like what we're convinced of and what we're what not. We're convinced of, and also like our past experiences. And like, if you're, if you're somebody who has, 
um, like has a hard science kind of background, I think that they're, they're going to be maybe a little bit leaning on to one side a little bit more to um, needing a certain amount of evidence to become convinced of yep, something. Be Somebody empirical. who who was raised um, in an area where there is a lot more of these kind of um, fluid kind of claims made, I think it's a lot easier for that person to um, remain in that state and be easily convinced of things. Um, but I don't think there's anything that's like different about our brains. Um, I think it has a lot to do with maybe past experience and what you're exposed to. Cause I know like I used to be of one brain state of being convinced <laughs> by something and through the process of more exposure to things, I changed to a different type and I am now, um, okay with the idea that there's not an immaterial kind of something going on in our brains. Um, and I don't lose sleep over it and I'm not mad about it either that people still think about it. I like hearing what people what they come up with. And I, I think that it's a, it's a very worthwhile conversation still. Um, sure. Nothing radically changed about me. Um, no. Yeah. I, 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 for, for a quick note here, I thought I once had an out of body experience I actually wrote a song about it. Um, but until um, I noticed that uh, so through some documentaries that I saw that I saw other people having those same experiences in a laboratory setting. And they were able to stimulate the part of the brain that gives you the out of body experience. And they literally thought they were out of their body, but the test came down to whether or not they could read the signs that were strategically placed in places, um, yeah, like the veridical. on top of, right. Or mm -hmm. up on top of a shelf, they'd have a boo or a hello or something. And these people claimed that they were flying around the room, uh, but none of them were able to tell them what was written on any of those pieces of paper because as we now know, thanks to some of the discoveries in neuroscience, it's all going on up here and not externally. So uh, I have a quick question for you, Sven. Are you familiar with any of the quantum field theory? Not enough to where anyone would want to have a conversation with me. I love Sean Carroll. I, I, I dabble, but I, no, I have no professional education. Yeah, every yeah, time Sean I was quantum, great. it would not go well. Go ahead. Okay, well, uh, uh, understanding of it. In okay. in quantum field theory, there is a uh, uh, belief, anyways, that every particle has its own field. So, in order for um, something like the soul, I mean, if it was real, it would have to be some form of matter or particle, and it would have its own field. And they have yet to find that field. Now, that's not saying they won't someday, because remember, they were chasing the Higgs boson forever until they finally found it. Right, so. You never know, but so far it's it's come up bupkis. So I, I think that like correct, I know, correct. Neil, and, yeah. Neil, I think Neil and I would kind of hold the position that <clears throat> unless something can be kind of demonstrated on that ex extrinsic level, um, it's kind of maybe better to hold the position of you know, I'm not convinced, and therefore I will say that um, that there needs to be more evidence for it, right? Whereas something has convinced you, Sven, I think you would, would you claim that you like, you said, you know, you don't want to make any, um, any extraordinary claims, but like you are currently convinced that there is something, um, kind of immaterial about the, what do you call What would you call you it? Can't, you can't call it immaterial. <laughs> you okay, can't call it yeah. immaterial. Immaterial equals doesn't exist. Cause it yeah, literally means it's that's not what I was material. just going to say, how, how do you describe that. it? <laughs> doesn't matter if it's immaterial it? it means it's not made of matter so it can't exist in this universe because we live in a material universe but that doesn't mean uh, though that life is uh closed to this universe i don't know what that we have means. no way of living in this universe well what's that let's see what the james webb telescope comes up with right. <laughs> 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 if we could see the edge, that'd be a good start. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, well, I, I think I really believe in a soul. I think there is more to me uh, and to you that I think morality is a great example of the soul. Uh, I think there's lots of hmm. evolution that happens in uh, humanity that, that is good evidence that some kind of soul or spirit is changing in us collectively as a curse and a race. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. You want to you want to bite into that one, Neil? <laughs> yeah, like the fact that there's less evil. You yeah, like a shared consciousness kind of, of thing, or 
I, well, I think you had mentioned like pan, panpsychism, uh, right? You're kind of oh, pan kind of, of that persuasion. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, it there's <sighs> many different types of it, but I've looked into panpsychism somewhat. Um, <laughs> My understanding is kind of, it's been a while, uh, but my understanding is that like, you know, consciousness is the, it's kind of a compatible view for, uh, for a lot of people because it's like the um, consciousness as like an, emer like an emergent, yeah, like an emergent property out of evolution and more complicated um, and complex neural systems. And, and, and that, that, because they can, they think that that's a present in many things in the world, not just in human humans. I and mean, is that's kind of like that down that path, right? Yeah, I would say it's kind of a friend, uh, well, panpsychism is French, but within panpsychism, there are a few um, people who would say it, it arises from, uh, oh my goodness, why am I blinking right now? I'm sorry, my nerves just took over. Uh, what did you say? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, so there aren't as many sides of panpsychists who believe that consciousness emerges. Uh, what panpsychism traditionally means is that there is consciousness within every particle. Uh, it is fundamental. So there is something to be an electron. There is something to be um, an element. But uh, I'm just wondering, like, how, and then how is it, it that they're describing our consciousness, consciousness emerge from point. a collection of that? Consciousness would be the experience of. So they believe in ev every single every single electron is having some sort of experience. Mm -hmm. That's if experience exists within humans, if we can see that experience exists, then it must exist on a fundamental level because in physics, everything. How do you make that leap down to a, a it fundamental does seem like level. a leap. If we experience this because well, our brains physics, are functioning properly, every fundamental. Well, we can't find the exact location. We can see where it all mixes and intertwines and works, but you you can't locate consciousness. We can see where it's um, the uh, electricity actually... happens. <laughs> I think that's just a, like to me. It's like a problem of inference, though. Like because I think so. I don't know. Because they I think do that know. that's kind of yeah. It leads back. To, yeah. It, I think it leads back to the intrinsic and extrinsic thing. You know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which is why I was wondering if even these great scientists and philosophers have uh, a trying to compatibilize uh, philosophy of mind and physics. Uh, mm -hmm. I I wonder if there's just a a complete difference and the kind of person who can believe in the profound and who can't. And it seemed like earlier, Aaron, you were trying to say that you think it's more nurture that allows someone to believe in the profound. And yeah. Well, I think that it's, I think, I, yeah, I do think it's like, in my opinion is that it is, it is very, very closely tied to personality. And I think personality is, it's not, it's both. I think it's both biological and also, um, nurture, nature and nurture basically. Um, but I, I think that I don't know. Obviously, I'm not like any kind of um, neuro neuroscientist or anything like that. That's just my kind of intuition about it is that it is um, largely related to personality and that that is kind of. Yeah, both. Let's l l let me put it this way for, for the uh, uh, surviving your own death, which I, I highly doubt is a thing uh, personally, but uh, um, in some capacity after death, um, the tests on the quantum field would have revealed some form of a, uh, for lack of a better term, spirit particle or spirit forces. They would have revealed themselves on the quantum field and they've never had that experience even around people that have, have, have passed away. So um, it would have to reveal itself somehow in order for it to actually be a thing. Uh, well, the, I've, I believe I would need to double check with Philip Goss, but, but uh, I believe the panpsychists would say that consciousness, uh, human consciousness, doesn't need to disasperate uh, or disperse at death because it goes from your brain as one collection of matter having a consciousness to the individual uh, particles of your brain having that consciousness. So again. Wouldn't, so wouldn't that like mean neurons? Wouldn't that wouldn't that alter so say so say that that is what we're if you're if i'm stepping into this i don't understand so i'm trying to do my best um so if our experience is the result of a collection of these uh consciousness particles and but once we die and our body is no longer there to like hold it all together wouldn't it like completely change the experience it would no disperse it, wouldn't it, it would make all it, the particles would disperse like that almost takes to me 
so even if that was true, even if like the um, panpsychism in that way that each individual electron has its own experience, the fact that they're no longer collected in that same way to me would mean it's kind of irrelevant whether they there's something that would still exist afterwards. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to look into this one a little bit more. I, I like yeah. where Neil's going yeah. with this. I, I am interested in like the philosophy of this. I'm not a super philosophizer myself. I'm, I'm doing my best to learn about it. Um, Hmm. But I have to look into a little bit more. But I no, it's fine. I don't know. I'm Real like quick, though, like once every three or six months, because I don't want to overlook yeah. the channel of philosophy and get word <laughs> salad comments. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. and I, I do, I do apologize for that. That is something, and I, I no, no, have had that fine. same, that same feeling too, because philosophy is very like it's lots of different new words and and like lots of different concepts that are really kind of hard to wade through a lot of the times. Um, so I don't know. Call, call. I would like you to be called back in three to six months, and I'll see if I've done my research on this, and we can have a better <laughs> conversation about it. Uh, Neil, did you, you had don't one more worry. thing to say, Neil, and then we'll yeah. let you Just, go after this one. They're they're getting quite close now to uh, figuring out which parts of the brain are responsible for human consciousness, and they so far they figure it's there's I think it I think there's, there's four or five different sections of the brain that combine to give you the self-awareness you know all that stuff that makes whatever consciousness is so they're getting closer to it and you never know sven they might find something we didn't know about once they figure that out so you can always keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best yeah i try to stay up to date thank you neil thank you aaron i hope you have a lovely weekend yeah thank you, you for calling in thanks bye, -bye. have a great have a great rest of your day. Um, uh, the delay is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, that is a that is a topic that I've tried really hard to um, understand more to try because I like I want to be able to like kind of charitably take this um, this idea because it's not theism. I don't think anybody that is arguing from panpsychism is calling to to no not claim that there is um, an afterlife and that means something something about what I should do in bed. That's different. Um, I think that it is, I think that it's a, a bit more of a, I don't know, it's a conversation I'm willing to take and uh, consider a little bit more, but I still ultimately come down to that. I like what you had said, that there's no way, there's nothing to measure. Um, and that's there's right. no, there's nothing there for me to point at and say, oh, that's it. That's the thing that you're talking about that lives after this is gone. So I don't know. I mean, when you die. You um, that you, you know that old expression that I often hear used a lot in sort of defense of these wooey kind of beliefs is well, energy doesn't die; it changes form. And right. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson said it the best. He goes, "Yeah, when you die, you become food energy for yeah. the flora and fauna that you fed off of during your lifetime, or if you're um, um, what's that burnt up, the uh, cremated, then you yeah. go up in smoke, and your atoms are dispersed back into the universe from whence they came." So yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. 